your assignment that's due next week is about finding web design resources. And web design is, in my opinion, sort of a misunderstood term. And let, let me explain to you why that is. Um, a lot of times when people talk about web design, they talk about, you know, um, things like what fonts are being used and what color is being used and that sort of thing. Um, and that is part of web design. That's not the entire aspect of web design. It's like if you think about automobile design, right? If you think about automobile design, um, what colors the automobiles are, are part of the design. But that's not necessarily what engineers spend their time working on all the time. They work on the functionality of it. They work on the fact that, you know, it's designed in a way that's safe. You know, they work on it so that uh, hopefully it would get maximum miles per gallon. You know, uh, they work on it to be comfortable for the people. And some, any mix of these things, they decide for a particular automobile because some of them are more economy-based, some of them are more comfort-based and so on. But they come up with things to, uh, they come up with a mix of things designed to put together the workings of the car. And then they, you know, other people probably worry about the specific design, like what color is it going to be? What color is the interior? Where the cup holders are going to be? You know, all those things are important, but not necessarily like the first level of importance. Or put another way, like if you're developing a, a term paper for an English class, um, they don't call it design, but really the preparation to write the paper is sort of like design, right? You do the research about your topic. You uh, create an outline for your topic. Uh, you come up with your thesis statement. You decide roughly how it's going to be organized, the introduction, uh, the body, the conclusion, and then you you start writing. At least that's what English teacher, teachers tell you you should do. All right. Uh, that is designing the paper before you create it. So anything that's a big task, there's an element of design, which is like the pre-planning that goes into it, the planning of what goes into it before you actually go and create it. And it's the same idea with web design. Now, uh, every time when we talk about web design, I bring up one of what I feel and what a lot of people feel is one of the best design sites there is. And that is, I don't even have to click a tab to get to it. That is Google. All right. If you look at Google, you know, this doesn't look like an artwork that you'd see in a museum, right? It's really simple. Uh, there's a few links. There's one text box. There's some other things here. Why do you think uh, I would say that this is well designed? Well, what about this do you think is well designed? Yes. It's simple. Number one is very simple. All right. Uh, in other words, there's nothing in my way to achieving my goal. All right. Design, the first place when we start talking about design is we're going to talk about understanding the goals, both of you as an organization and uh, people that are visiting this site. So people come to Google typically to search for things. Yeah, they come to Google for other things as well. And guess what? Those things are up here. You can get to them still. But most of the things people come to Google for are searching for a particular topic. And it makes that solving that goal much, much more easier than maybe some of its competitors. Now, I'm going to bring up another site that's similar to Google in some ways, but it's different. And maybe we can talk about the differences between them and why one would take one strategy versus another. Well, if we go to yahoo.com. Northeast braces for heavy snow. Is that us? <laughs> I, I didn't know we were getting snow. Anyhow, look at this. You can search the web, certainly too. We could search for HTML here. But 
look at all this other stuff on the page. Now, you might think about like, well, does that mean Yahoo is necessarily poorly designed? No, it's because they attribute different goals to the users. They assume that users visiting their site are going to want to see not only just be able to search, but see like the headlines of news as well. All right. So they perceive in their audience different goals than Google sees in their audience. So that's what it all comes back to. If you think of websites that you like, all right. Websites that you like allow you to do the things that you want to do on them, right? eBay. eBay allows you to either sell things or buy things. Facebook. Facebook allows you to connect with friends and so on. So achieving those goals is sort of the top line of what we're going to try to look at uh, in designing the site. And then some of the other things come in sort of second place, you know, like the color, the design and all that. They're important, too. Because you can have a great sense of the goals, but ruin it by having too complicated of a site or whatever. Uh, I always love to see uh, the examples people use for the poorly designed websites. Those are more fun for me to visit than, than the, the well designed websites. You know, I know what well designed websites look like. I, I want to see what poorly designed websites look like. Those are much more fun to look at. And most of them, again, they might have the goals in mind correctly, but the way they went about in that second stage coming up with the physical appearance of the site is where they fail. So this brings us to a discussion of our semester project. And our semester project is going to be turned in. I'm not getting audio. Uh, I tried troubleshooting on my end and can. Uh, well, let me check. Can't find anything wrong on my end. Let me check. I told my Mac user it takes me a second to find things. Okay, uh, the mi uh, microphone is working. Uh, it is connected to the right microphone and it is working. Uh, It still is. Um, is there any way I can boost the microphone here? Troubleshoot. Let me check one more thing. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Okay, I am not muted. That unmutes me. Uh, let me check the settings. Um, yeah, it is using the system setting. Maybe that's not correct. Is this better for you? Do you hear now? Oh, I don't want to do that.
Of course, if she can't hear me, she can't hear me ask her if it, she can hear me better. So let me try this. It's not important, not just for her, but anyone that would watch the recording if the audio isn't working. Oh, just said something. Oh, you still can't hear me. Okay. Uh, well, I'll I'll have to. I hope I hope the video for this, the audio for this, are connects are correctly. I never typically have problems with the audio, but anyhow. Okay. So for our semester project, two things about our semester project. There's two things that you're going to complete. Two deliverables. There's one that is the design, which is due March 20th, which is not that far from now. All right, in the whole scheme of things, right? It's a month and a week maybe uh, away from now. So the design is something that you probably should look at as soon as you can, all right? Then there is the final project, which is the completed website. The project will consist mainly of, uh, the project design will consist mainly of a document, a Word document or a PDF or, you know, any kind of text document that you create, along with some HTML files as a prototype. All right, we'll talk about what I mean by a prototype later on, but some sample HTML files. All right, let's look at the project design, what you'll turn in. Let's first look at the project overview. Small website. There probably will not be an opportunity to develop for a nonprofit. Your website should, should consist of six to eight pages with a reasonable amount of content for a web page. In other words, I've seen real web pages. So I know if you put just one sentence on your page that that is not a real web page, you know, so, so don't, don't try something like that. The goal of it is to create a site that's technically sound well-designed and effectively communicates the intended message. All right, so let's look at the first deliverable that we have. The design. All right, this consists of five sections. The first four of those sections will be in a Word document or a text document. The last section is a prototype, which consists of some basic HTML page, which are kind of your rough draft of what the site is gonna look like. So strategy, all right? You're gonna define the site's purpose, topic or purpose. You're gonna create three user personas. Okay, what are user personas? Now, Everyone visiting your website might have slightly different goals, right? However, we can generalize a little bit and say there's certain groups of people that are going to be uh, visiting your site. Let's talk about a couple examples here, and, and I hope that defines what personas are. A college's website. Let's think of the kinds of people that are going to be visiting a college's website. Does anyone name one group of people that will be visiting a college's website. Yes. People that are applying there. In other words, people that we'll call those prospective students. So they haven't decided that they're going there yet, maybe. All right. Or maybe they have decided they're going there and they need to, you know, register, enroll, and do that. Can anyone name another group of people that might be visiting a college website? Yes. The people that are already enrolled, the students, all right? Uh, and we could go on and do this over and over again. And we could come up with actually quite a few groups. That's probably why a college website is so big and complicated, right? Because other people that visit a college website are the, the faculty and staff, all right? Uh, people that might be transferring to that college. Now, they might have some needs a little different than people that are thinking about applying because they already have credits and so on. You might have adult learners that are working in a job and want to come to school and, and maybe 
advance their career or switch careers. Uh, you might have high school students whose needs might be a little different, who sort of fit in some of these categories, but whose needs might be different. You might just have members of the community, all right? And am I sharing the screen? I don't think so. So you might have members of the community as well. All these are personas. Like members of the community might want to come to see the basketball team play, all right? or see a concert, uh, you know, see what cultural events are on, on campus, or see what uh, uh, non-credit classes there are, and so on. So there really are a lot of different groups of people that would be accessing a college's website. And they all have, this, they all have their own goals. Now, to be sure, some of their goals might be a little different than, or, or some of their goals might be a little different than other groups, but some of their goals are gonna be the same or very similar. You know, an adult learner that is thinking of coming here to go to school might have different goals than a uh, high school student coming here, all right? Uh, a parent of a high schooler might have different goals than a high schooler would have in visiting the site and so on. So they all have goals, all right? Uh, I mentioned some, a community member might wanna see the cultural events, sport events, about the gym facilities. Is there a gym on campus that you can join? A person transferring might look to see who they contact to get their transcript evaluated and what programs are offered and how they register as a transfer student and so on. They all have their unique goals. Let's talk about a restaurant. All right, let's talk about a restaurant. Let's think of some groups of people that would be visiting a restaurant. Might seem like there's only one group of people that will be visiting a restaurant, right? Hungry people, all right? But there's other groups of people that might visit a restaurant's website. We can divide those hungry people into some categories. What might some of those categories be? People that make food? Rate food, okay. Restaurant critics, all right? Uh, like, you know, people that, that give and evaluate the food. That would be one possible group. Uh, another group that, of people, yes. Yeah, we could divide it that way. Families, all right? Certainly families have different needs than, let's say, a couple that was going out on a date, right? Uh, Family might be interested, yeah, do they have a kid's meal uh, or, you know, a kid's menu? Uh, a couple probably isn't going to care about that one way or another. So they're going to have different goals. Uh, business people that were going there for lunch, what is the atmosphere like? Is it really, if, they're, if you're going there for like maybe an informal meeting, is it really loud and boisterous or is it a sort of a quiet place where you can talk and, and connect and so on? Uh, people with special special dietary needs, you know, people that uh, are vegetarian or vegan, you know, they they would be visiting the site. They potentially could be visiting the site. People that either eat kosher or halal, they could be visiting the site to see if uh, the food meets their dietary requirements and so on. So even with something like a restaurant, where maybe at first glance, you might say, well, there's only one group of people visiting a restaurant. If you really think about it, you can divide them into separate groups. And again, they may have, uh, they may have uh, some things in common, but there's gonna be some things that are different. You know, depending on where you are, maybe tourists. You know, if you're in a place that, you know, or visitors to the city might have a different, uh, you know, a big city might have that population of people, people that are visiting the city. And, you know, maybe you are interested in, in getting Cleveland specialties. I don't know, what would Cleveland food specialties be? I know Parma has their pierogies, so that would be one. Uh, I don't know if that's overall Cleveland, whatever, whatever, the, the, the Lake Erie Perch, let's say, you know, so that might be something that uh, if, you, if you cater to tourists, you might want to focus that, like, oh, they could get something, you know, authentic to this area. 
All right, a video game. All right, a video game. There could be groups of people that are visitors. Number one, it could be people that already are playing the game. All right, maybe they're looking for hints or whatever. People that are trying to decide whether they want to buy the game or not might be interested in gameplay videos and reviews from people. Uh, parents of people thinking of buying the, the game. Does, you know, the game, you know, is the game appropriate for my kid, however age they are, all right? All these are different groups of people. So just about any topic you can think of, you can find different groups of people that will potentially be visiting the site. And for our project, I'm asking you to come up with three different groups of people, all right? And I've not had anyone come up to me with a topic where there was not, where I couldn't find, help them find three groups of people that would be possibly visiting their site. Um, and you come up with personas. Now, what are personas? Well, this is a chance for you to engage in your creativity. Look at images. This is an example of a persona. The website they're talking about is a shoe store, an online shoe store. And they give the person a name even, right? That could be useful in conversation. What would Brandy want out of this site? It sounds a little hokey, it sounds a little corny maybe, but it is an effective tool to, to really think of the people visiting your site as unique individuals, but representative of certain groups of people. And what characterizes Brandy is she has a special need for shoes. In other words, she has narrow feet. She might not be able to find shoes that fit her well at any, you know, at, at other stores. So maybe that's something, you know, uh, sort of the same category, but maybe different specific would be, would be maybe someone that had really big feet, all right, or whatever. They give some characteristics about her. Uh, they give a, a relevant quote. It's so difficult to uh, buy shoes that fit my feet. And they come up with three goals. And that's where it's most important, the persona. They need SS with shoe, 4A with shoe. That's very narrow. We'd like to purchase several pairs to fit occasion, st style, and color. Hoping to find that she doesn't have to sacrifice style or options when searching by fit. All right. These are all things that are top on her mind when she's visiting a shoe store site. And you don't have to do this for your assignment, but a thing to keep in mind as you uh, evolve in this career is that they're pointing to real life customers of this organization that sort of represent, that, that Brandy represents. In other words, a person who has, wears a 4A, uh, a person uh, that, you know, uh, is trying to balance style and comfort and so on. So what you need to do for your persona is I want you to give them a name. I want you to give some identifying characteristics of it, age, gender, uh, include a photo if you want. You, know, you can either take, you can put your friends in here if you want, all right? And I want you to identify three different goals for the three different personas. I came up with a sample persona here, and this is a little out of date.
Our persona is James LeBron. He's a father of a young man who wants to be uh, a good high school player. Son is in eighth grade. Well, his son's in, in or out of college even now. Something like that. So this is a few years old. And James wants his son to improve his skills as he goes into high school. He's, he, uh, LeBron himself has played some basketball, but is not an expert. All right, his goals are to help son to learn to shoot shots that he himself does not know how to shoot. You know, maybe he doesn't know how to shoot a hook. Maybe he doesn't know how to shoot a reverse layup. So he wants to be able to show his kids demonstrations of things that he can't personally do himself. He wants to find drills to improve his son's skills. Finally, he wants to help son learn to shoot with both hands. So maybe some of the drills that they come up with would be to help the, the, the student shoot with both hands. So this is kind of what, you know, you don't have to do elaborate as the first example, but maybe something like this is something that I would want. A picture, a name, a description of the person, and their three goals. All right. Now, just like, just like uh, the users have goals, the pretend organization that you're creating the website for is going to have goals. For example, let's say you gave uh, basketball training seminars. You know, one of your goals might be to get new people to come and attend your seminars, right? Most websites people don't create just because, you know, out of the goodness of their heart, right? Most websites have some motivation in mind to usually uh, for some commercial purpose, Typical, so typically some are commercial purposes, but it doesn't have to be, right? There can be websites that exist for educational purposes where the motivation isn't to make money, but the motivation is to educate people, all right? Uh, but people that create websites have their own motivations too. So like I mentioned with the basketball uh, uh, organization, their goals might be to get people to sign up, get new people to sign up for their basketball camps. A second goal might be to get return visitors, all right? Uh, maybe you have new coaches this year that you hadn't had in previous years. Maybe you use that as a selling point. Like, well, there's a new coach. Maybe they have some new techniques and ideas. All right, and so on. The other thing might be the parents of the young basketball players. You know, you want the parents to be assured that it's going to be a good, fun, educational, safe experience for their kids. Finally, maybe basketball coaches. Maybe they want to go and look and preview these so they can recommend to their students what a good basketball camp would be to go to. You know, contact, you know, maybe they would contact the, the person that runs the camp and talk to them and find out what kind of things they do to get an idea of what the camp is. So, create three user personas, a prioritized list of goals for their, for each persona, and a prioritized list of your goals for this project. So, again, Assume you're part of an organization making this website. What do you think your goals would be in making this site? You know, uh, and to say to make money isn't detailed enough, right? To get new customers, to keep existing customers, and so on, a little more specific. That is the strategy section. Description of the site's purpose, three user personas, a list of your goals, a list of three user goals. The scope is the requirement, all right? Requirements match up with goals, all right? Let's go back to our restaurant example. One of the goals might be of, of uh, someone with a special diet might be to see if they have food that matches, you know, that's acceptable for their special diet. That's a, that's, a, that's a goal that some of their users have. 
What the restaurant does to achieve that goal is a requirement. So you might say to match that goal, I'm going to have a list of ingredients of my dishes, or I'm going to put a, a little icon indicating if they're vegetarian, vegan, kosher, halal next to them, or if they are low cholesterol or low sugar, diabetic diet or heart friendly diet or whatever. So the requirement might be to identify what diets each dish is appropriate for. And I have that right on the page so that anyone looking for uh, a uh, uh, food that meets a certain diet can easily identify that. Maybe a search function where you allow the user to search for food that matches that particular diet. You know? Um, so the vegetarian can see, gee, do they have a variety of vegetarian dishes or is it just a salad bar? for vegetarian dishes, you know, and so on. The requirements help satisfy the goal, all right? Now, requirements are not things like, I'm going to have a user-friendly website, all right? That's not a requirement. Why not? For number one, that's extremely vague. And number two, that's the point of web design, period, right? Uh, you're not ever going to have a website where you're going to say, I'm going to make a site that is hostile to the needs of the users, right? It doesn't make any sense, right? Or you, it, likewise, you're not going to say the site's going to have easy navigation. Of course, that's one of your goals, right? That's not a goal or a requirement. That's just the principles of basic web design. The goals uh, and Requirements relate specifically to the special content on your site. All right. So the goals for a user is not to visit a user friendly site. The goals for the user is to find out if the restaurant sells dishes that meet my dietary requirements. All right. Find dishes that meet my budgetary requirements and so on. Now for each goal, you should probably have at least one requirement, right? If you or your three top personas have identified something as being one of their three most important things about the site, you better address that on your site, right? Otherwise you're missing the boat. You're not having, you're not addressing the requirements of uh, the needs rather and the goals of your user. So each goal should have a requirement. Lastly, each requirement should match up with the goal. So let's, again, you can tell I like to eat because uh, I always use, always come back to the restaurant example. A biography of the chef. Should you have that on a restaurant's website or not? I would say it depends, right? Uh, if, you know, if the restaurant you're talking about is, uh, uh, steak and shake, you know, relatively, you know, lower budget, lower end restaurant, then no, you know, they probably don't need to know anything about the chef. No disrespect intended to them, but that's not going to draw people in. People aren't going to want to know about the sh chef at steak and shake. That will not be among the goals of the people visiting the site. Now, on the other end, a high end that's run by maybe a high profile chef. Yeah, maybe you put the biography because that would meet the goals of people that are visiting a high-end restaurant to know something about the chef. So the requirements match up with goals. Every goal should have at least one requirement. Every requirement should match up to at least one goal. All right. And again, each group is going to have their own goals, but some of the goals may overlap. Both a family and a couple out on the date might both be concerned about the prices, right? Can we afford to go to this restaurant? That's not a question that, you know, is uh, strictly just for one group or another. That might be a goal of several different groups uh, that are visiting the site. So you'll just, for this, use a bulleted list. Do not write a paragraph. If you write a paragraph, it's not necessarily wrong, 
but it makes it much harder to read and pick out. Make the requirements jump out at anyone reading this document. Because remember, who do we make this document for? Who are we creating this document for? We're creating this document for our customer because maybe I'm part of the marketing department of this restaurant and I want to show the people in charge what the website's going to look like before it's finished, right? It's better for me to show the plan of the website and get feedback, whether it's a good plan or a bad plan, than to build the entire website and then show it to the people in charge and to find out does it meet their requirements. Uh, secondly, you might have a, a team of developers that are going to develop this. So you need to communicate to the people developing this page what the site's going to be about, what it's going to look like, and so on. In many cases, you might not actually work for the company you're building the website for. You may be brought in as a consultant, a consultant or you know, as a, as a contractor to build a website uh, for that. So that's a possibility too, all right? So you want to communicate the plan for the website before you actually build it. Because when you build it, I won't say it's too late, but to go and undo things takes a lot more time, believe it or not, than to creating them right the first time around. All right. So your aim is to get a good plan so you create out of the box a website that matches the needs and goals of both the organization that's creating the site and the individuals that are going to be visiting it. The third part is a structure chart. A structure chart of a website shows how the different pages are connected. And it might look something like this. I don't know what this is supposed to be a website for, use your imagination, but there's a home page. Off the home page, there are six sort of sections, and each section has these pages associated with that. This looks like it's a website for an organization that is either part of the government or is somehow connected to the government. So this is the purpose of the structure chart, or this is the way a structure chart looks. So use word art, draw it by hand and take a picture of it if you want to. I don't really care about the form of it. Obviously, if you make it better looking, that's great. But if I don't want you struggling with like Visio or some other tool and really having a hard time with it, I want the content. I'm more interested in the content than the appearance of this. All right. You should also consider alternatives of how you could organize a website. For example, if I had a shoe store, let's say I, I sell athletic shoes, all right, I could divide, I could have my home page, and then I could have men, women, and children as the three subcategories off the home page. And then under men, I could have golf, tennis, football, basketball, and so on. Under women, golf, tennis, football, basketball. Under children, the same thing. That's one way I could organize it. The other way I could organize it is organize it by sport. I could have my main page and then I could have all my basketball shoes, regardless of what category of person you fit into. All my football shoes, all my uh, you know, tennis shoes. So you should think about how you're gonna organize it and organize it in a way that makes the most sense given your user goals. 
and maybe write a sentence or two explaining why you chose that structure. Now the next section is called the skeleton section. or wireframe. A wireframe would look something like this. All right, you're doing a plant, uh, a, a website for a plant nursery. And this is one wireframe. You'd have maybe the title up here, some links up here, and then an image, and then subcategories underneath. Maybe when you go to a specific category, this is what you get. So maybe when you go to outdoor plants, you see three thumbnails and pictures of them or so on. You don't necessarily need a wireframe for every page. In fact, that's probably not a good idea because your page should look pretty consistent, right? If you go to Amazon, for example, Make sure I'm not a robot. Why don't robots need to shop for goods and services for Amazon? Okay, if you go to a product web page, a Stanley Cup. I swear when that became so popular and people talk about the Stanley Cup, I thought they meant the hockey trophy, Stanley Cup. And it's like, then I realized, oh, it's, it's a water bottle, okay. All right, now look, notice how this page is designed. Picture of the main item, description of the item, rating, price, colors, information about this item. Let's go to a different product, completely different product. Let's look for an HTML book. Totally different product, yet it looks the same. Same structure. You have your links up here. Description of the product. A picture of the product. I don't see the price for some reason. Oh, because there's options, okay. The Kindle option, the uh, audio book, hardcover, and so on. But the basic design looks the same. So Amazon doesn't have a different page for different products. They have the same page with maybe a few options here and there. So you'll come up with wireframes of your basic page design. A simple website might only have one wireframe. Maybe you have two wireframes. Maybe you have a wireframe for your homepage and a wireframe for every other page. All right. But it's a drawing like this. It shows the basic structure of the page and what's going to be on it. So far, the first four of those items are in the Word document. So they're written. For strategy, you have the goals and the personas and that stuff. For the requirements, you have a bulleted list of the requirements. For the structure, you have a structure chart along with a sentence or two explaining why you picked that format. For the wireframes, you have one or two, probably, probably not more, of wireframes of what the basic layout for your pages are going to be. So those four items are going to be in the Word document. The last part is a prototype. All right. And if you think of a prototype, a prototype is just a basic example to give people an idea what the finished product is going to look like. All right. 
So it's not a completed website, but it gives people maybe an idea of what the pages are gonna look like. You might not have the final text on the page. You might not have the final images on the page, but you might show some sample images and you might have the basic navigation defined correctly. We're gonna spend some time over the next couple of weeks talking about prototypes in more detail and developing prototypes and ways that we can take our wireframes and turn them into prototypes. So that's what we'll start out next week. In addition, next week we will start, uh, we will also talk about your other ongoing assignment for the semester, which is a portfolio. Uh, you're gonna be developing, you're gonna be collecting all your assignments and creating a portfolio. We'll talk about what portfolios are, what purpose they, they serve, and how to take your assignments and turn them into a portfolio. So that's what we have going for the next couple of weeks. All right, uh, that's all I had today. Are there any questions? Myra, were you able to hear me okay? Okay, that's all I had for today. Uh, if, uh, again, either uh, we'll see you in lab or we will see you next week. Thank you.